all right we're back on our normally scheduled broadcast for the time being um it's been a busy week between getting videos from the charles city trip put together and trying to play catch up on everything that didn't get done because i wasn't here so i did manage to get the 150 serviced and i got my lawnmower serviced and um got the starter generator rebuild on the old sears because we're, i'm going to use that for working in the garden this year because we got a rototiller for it which um we'll see that later because um last season people kind of showed some interest in the garden so we might be seeing a little bit of that here and there just because people seemed interested um but as far as 150 goes the original drive shaft is back in it uh they straightened it welded a new tube in it and balanced it and it's got two new universals in it it's like yeah obviously you got to replace the universals to balance it and there was one that was getting a little bit of chunk in it anyhow um it's all the oils changed everything should be good to go um it is still being all the 4150 it could be because anybody that was following along last year um it start it was transferring uh 80 90 from the rear from the rear rear gear case into the hydraulics and i thought i had it fixed when we went through the uh cooler pump that gerotor pump in behind the main hydraulic pump because it seemed to quit well apparently it didn't quit um and when i was servicing it it was over full, the hydraulics were over full again and the rear gear case was low so i called out to Maybaugh and talked to Brad about it and um, basically the only other thing that he suggested and I never even thought about it and the first time I talked to him he didn't even think about it PTO obviously my PTO screwed up because it never stops running it's it's always been on the back simmering on the back burner because I don't know if I want to rebuild this one or get a dual speed unit to put on it and I never do any PTO work with it, so it's never been a super duper high priority thing to do. Um, but what he suggested to do uh, was eliminate the uh, re hydraulic return line coming from the valve. So it goes from here up to where that little plug is right there. And basically, all that take that, or you take that line out, and basically, what that does is sends hydraulic pressure to the clutch pack all the time so it basically just locks the clutch pack up so now the pto is actually physically engaged and see if that stops sending oil up to the reservoir and if it does boom we got our culprit it's something boogered in the pto um now hopefully that doesn't mean it goes starts going the other way and i think to eliminate the possibility of it going the other way i might actually block off the supply line to um and then you completely eliminate any path for oil crossover because there's no hydraulic oil going to the pto at all um which would just the clutch would always be unlocked doesn't really matter because don't get, use the pto but if i block off that line which can be done right down there at that fitting and just take that line off for now um then that eliminates any possibility that it could be that, that it could transfer hydraulic oil into the rear end because if it was pulling hydraulic or if it was pulling gear oil from the pto into the hydraulics if you take that that avenue out it's also a possibility now that you're pressurizing it that it could dump hydraulic oil into the rear end so at this point we're just a process of elimination to find the problem so i quit throwing money at although it was a good thing that we threw some money at that gerotor pump because that thing was about ready to fly apart um but basically quit throwing money at fake gremlins and find the i didn't even bother draining the hydraulic oil and refilling it because i figured there's no sense in contaminating another seven gallons or whatever of good hydraulic oil just find the problem once we know the problem's eliminated then go ahead and drain it down and and refill it so 
Right, wrong, or indifferent, oil's too expensive to keep contaminating good oil, so I might as well just leave the contaminated oil in there. It's oil's oil. So, that's where the 150's at, and I did, the only other thing I didn't do yet, and I finally got the bolts for it, is lock wire bolts for that kingpin. Um, I'll do that later this week, because today the focus is this. Five minutes into the video. Um, getting all new blades across the front, blades, bearings, um, I got parts to replace some of the missing teeth on the harrow. I should have got an entire bar, but, uh, because that one's a little schmucked up. Um, so I got some teeth, I got some U-bolts to fix some of the stuff that's missing or loose on the, on the harrow bars. Uh, I got a couple chain, or a couple, or I got a new... 15 foot of new chain to replace i got two chains that uh i don't think chains actually broke i think the bolts broke but since i got the chain and then you got ones like this this one's about ready to go so we'll probably just replace that one that one i think the bolt actually broke but since we're replacing the bolt we'll replace the rope yeah we will replace the chain i got some spikes to replace a few missing spikes i got plenty of u-bolts um so we'll do that and then if I get time I'd like to fix this problem um the hole in the spring retainers whatever you want to call it is ovaled out from years of that I don't really know I would assume these well, I have to I have to strike it with a file and see what the filings look like. I would assume that these are made out of cast steel because I wouldn't think the cast iron would hold up to the pounding that they take. And if that's the case, you could theoretically weld the holes shut and re-drill the holes. That's a lot of first you gotta pray to God that everything comes apart, and then you gotta weld it all up, and then you gotta re-drill all the holes. And I think there's almost 30 shovels on here. I think there's 28, 29 shovels, something like that so but that might also be a project for next season as well we'll see um but blades are my main concern because these are these are obviously shot so that's where we're gonna start all right, gang bolts. I took one out to measure so I can get new gang bolts because I got carriage bolts, so you don't need two wrenches or whatever to take it apart. For as crusty as they are, they come out surprisingly easy, so rather than dragging the torch out here and making a mess, as long as they'll come out, we'll just take them out. That was about to not be a nut and bolt anymore. I should have got, uh, of course, generally by the time the bolts get to this point, the blades are shot anyhow, but I should have got, they make those uh, bearing guards that go on the front bolt and the bottom bolt, and they're supposed to protect the bearing halves from wear like that, but like I say, generally by the time they get to that point, the blades are shot and you're replacing them anyhow, so. I guess I don't necessarily know if they're worth the money. Okay. I don't think these, I mean, they probably got another, another few thousand acres in them. Maybe I'm wasting my money replacing them. Alright. 
Oh, it's hung up on the blade scrapers, I do believe. Okay, let's try. See if we can get that other side. getting the right combination. Don't try this at home, kids. I just want to confirm. I think it's this gang is the one that's got. Yeah. This gang's the one that's got the weeble wobble going on. It's tweaked right there at the bearings. Well, I should be able to straighten that out. Apparently, if you need spacers, you just torch the center out of some older blades and. So I will roll this up into the garage, or at least closer to the garage, so I can get at it with the big impact. Like I've had these gang nuts off. One of these has a new bearing on it. I think it's that wing. Yeah, it's that wing. That wing's got one new bearing on it. It's had a bearing go out, but the nuts do come. That luckily nothing's rusted, so the nuts do come apart. But. God, you get them things off the off the finisher and you realize how just how bad they are. Holy cow. That's got a pretty good taper going to it. Anyhow, I'll go get the, the impact and stuff strung out here and we'll get that one apart. dang nuts back far enough that uh, the socket ain't deep enough to get to it. I was afraid of that. Now what? Okay, so obviously the uh, axle didn't need to necessarily be that long, so I just nibbled like a half inch off the end. Um, all the bearings lined up everything, so it, there was no need to have that much thread sticking out as a more thread to make the nut harder to get off when things rust up so now you can get to it with the socket uh, I'll just set you back up here you get a better full view from there
right, the first gang's done back on. Um, a bunch of guys all at once showed up to get hydraulic hoses, so I stopped videoing. You can tell it's spring. And once I got it back together, I also noticed that this gang's got a little bit of weeble wobble out here in this outer bearing, too. They probably should have moved this flange out to here. Like on that side, we've only got one blade outside the bearing, but I will. I am not going to fold the tab over yet um, because I want to get a couple acres on it and then retighten the gang bolts because things are probably going to shift around a little bit. So that will get folded over and that'll get, and that'll get locked after we get a chance to double check it. So I will get that gang off and we will pick up where I had to stop because people were all over the place. All right, I got this axle tore down, obviously. Um, got it in a press. This, the other, that first axle we took apart, it's got a little bit of a wobble on it, but you can't really tell. This one you can see from the tractor. And this axle apparently has run loose at some point because it's got some pretty good scoring going on, but I think we'll be okay to run it. And if need be, I can get another axle later if they're still, I assume they're still available. I think you could buy I think there are, are companies that will make you axles to length, but surely as many of these things as there are, you should be able to get one through Agco still, I would think. I don't know if Shoop's got one or not. Let's set you over here because this thing's a little unwieldy. Try it on the bench and see if it's straight. It's got to be straighter. All right, it's a lot straighter than it was. It's straight enough for what it is. It, you lay it on the bench, there's actually, it's kind of a wave. It's got multiple bends in it, and our press isn't, uh, doesn't have enough room to get this in where it needs to be to straighten it out completely. And when it comes to gang bolts, the only time these things are ever straight is when they're put on at the factory. The minute these things hit dirt, you start hitting rocks and stuff, and they they'll it's 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 good enough for what it is. It's a tillage tool. It's not a precision instrument. mention of this I think I actually talked about this when I was putting that 252 disc together a couple seasons ago but and I don't I'm assuming that most other manufacturers were the same way but I know for sure Oliver when they were putting disc games together at the factory actually had big plungers built into the floor that would hold the gang bolt you set the gang bolt in it you started building the the gang on top of it and as you, as the gang got heavier the bolt or the there was a spring under the plunger and the gang would sink into the floor so you're always working at waist height and uh then once you got your gang assembled and everything tight they'd latch onto it with a crane pick it up out of the hole in the floor and take it over and set it on the storage rack or wherever they took them so it'd be nice to have one of those. Because honestly, that is the best way to put these things together is standing up. And the worst part is keeping hold of them. Which 
actually, if you got two people to do it, one to fold and one to stack parts, it, it ain't that big of a deal, but you're doing it by yourself. Yeah, you kind of got to do it all at once. Well, you measure the bearings out compared to the mounts on the gang. They're pretty damn close to where they need to be, so I guess I don't know what the deal is as to why there's so much sticking out the end of the gang bolt, but they had, I think this used to be a piece of spool, maybe. But it, it makes a nice washer, so I put that in there on the end. Um, I guess we'll find out when I throw it back on there. That's the worst part about built, rebuilding all gangs like this is you don't know if any of the spools have a little bit like that one there and that one there have a little bit of wear on them, but you don't know what that equates to as far as distance goes. So what do you do? Do you do you re or do you throw every single or do you replace every single spool when you do a gang to make sure they're all the right length or? what do you do you don't know so anyhow throw this one back on and see what happens all right second gang's back on i didn't video it because fighting these spring loaded blade scrapers um trying to get this thing this these are the most miserable disc gangs i have ever dealt with when it comes to going back on they're just they're terrible and uh, so I didn't video putting it back on because the uh, amount of colorful language used fighting between pinching fingers and fighting those blade scrapers and getting them on there. It just, the amount of colorful languages was above and beyond what's even normal for this channel. So I just, I just, we just didn't, we didn't. Um, I actually had this thing on there twice because I had ended up having to put these cut off disc blades back behind that spacer to move this bearing out um so apparently between all the spools on this gang there must be roughly you know, what is that probably three quarters of an inch there must be roughly three quarters of an inch wore off amongst all those spools because apparently it ran loose at some point so um either you buy new spools or you make a spacer and it works perfectly fine so we just made a spacer um I do think I'm going to end up having to buy the bearing protectors because the bottom bolt hole on the hanger on this one and the same one on that far one, the bolt hole is basically gone. I threw a washer on there for now so I can get everything tight and where it belonged, but if I get, and I'll probably have to modify them a little bit to go on this side because I think they're actually meant to go on the flange side. Um... But uh, if I get bearing protectors, they will eliminate or they will solve that problem. Um, the only other way to solve it would be to come back in here and cut it off right here and weld a piece on and hope you get the, and hope you can get the hole in the right location and everything. And it's just it that can be if it becomes an issue, we can do that later. But I think a bearing protector will solve the problem, so I'll just have to get some. But anyhow, I, this is taking, it took me, uh, by the time I finally got everything around and got rolling because of chasing parts and whatnot this morning, it was about 1.30 when I got started, so we are going on four hours to get those two done. Hopefully, the lessons learned on those will translate over to here and these two will go faster, but I'm going to speed run that side and get it done because... I want to have the gangs out of the way so that all we got to work on tomorrow is the harrow and I got one tire I got to change because it was scaring me. Um, so anyhow, let me get those two done and uh, we will end the video for the day. Alright, apparently I picked the hard side to do first. Because this side didn't go nearly as bad. It took me about four hours to do the other side. It took me about two hours to do this side. 
I did notice though, this was something interesting that I noticed while I was putting this last gang back in. Check this out. If I can get in here, my back's killing me right now. Um, so check out this right here. So apparently the little bit of wobble this axle has in it, once you get out to the end of them blades, translates to a fair bit of wobble. But uh, anyhow, see how close they get to the blade scraper mount. And apparently it's been a problem before because somebody went in with a torch and clipped the corners. But there's still something goofy going on here because even if you factor out that wobble, you look at you look at how far these blades are on this straight gang, straight air, straight air gang. Look how far the blades are away from the holders. And on this, even if you straightened out the axle and took that little bit of wobble out of it, you're gonna be dang near touching them bolt heads. So there's still something goofy going on with this whole gang and I haven't, I don't exactly know. The only thing I can figure is maybe those in order to it's got to be this spool right here that's screwed up because that would that would uh yeah if you put those spacers down here at this spool that would move both these blades back away from that the scraper holders um, this scraper holder is bent, so it's close no matter what. But right here's where the problem starts. So I'm thinking that, and let's let's look down here at this other end of it. Yeah, and see, well, I don't know. You got the spacers here, and this gap looks about right so i don't know maybe it's maybe that whole maybe that whole axle and all the spools just just need to be replaced because that that's the only one that was jacked up there all the other ones came apart and went right back together no spacers no goofy no nothing it was just this one so maybe that's what i need to do i'm not going to bother doing it this year because that'll that'll do what i need to do but Maybe that's what needs to happen is just buy all new spools and buy a new axle and just replace that whole axle assembly. Um, so anyhow, that's that's the only goofy thing I ran into. Everything else is... And then the blade scrapers. Really, now that it's got good blades on it, other than some that are obviously tweaked. Most of the blade scrapers ain't terrible, but maybe next year... I'm sure that if, if if there are new blade scrapers available for it, I'm sure I'll have to go through Agco to get them. So I'll have to check the availability of scrapers for it. Maybe next year we can put some scrapers and stuff on it. Although by all rights on a soil finisher, if it's wet enough that you need blade scrapers to get through what you're working, probably shouldn't be running a soil finisher over it anyhow. But... Uh, because I've, I've never had any issues with the gangs plugging on this, even remotely. Because I don't really pull it over ground that's that wet. And when I do, it's just like a spot like you dip through a waterway that's dry on the other side. So, by all right. But, uh, anyhow. And I could sit here and nitpick this whole thing all day. Because, I mean, everywhere I look, she could use a little TLC. But, baby steps. Because I don't want to throw a crap ton of money. Trying to not spend a bunch of money this year. Because the way grain markets are. You just really don't want to be spending a bunch of money this year. But those. The blades they, they needed replaced. So. Um, I'll get. Bearing guards for it. And we'll put those on. That, well, I probably won't have those till Tuesday. Um, and since I'm going to order them. Or since I'm making another order. Just to get my dollar amount up. I'll uh, order some lock plates, which I should have done, but I kind of forgot about. I was, thought about making my own, but then once I have to order those blade guards, might as well just order some lock plates. 
um, all the all the shanks need some TLC. I don't know if we're gonna I don't know if we're gonna bother with that this season or not. Um, mostly because it's uh, what what is this April? It's April thirteenth. So this time last year. I was uh, already working on the corn planter, so my goal is hopefully by next weekend to have everything ready, because this will be done, hopefully it'll be done to where you could like use it, it'll be done tomorrow, other than a couple odds and ends I gotta get from shoot yet, um, but they that's not something that you would stop you from taking it out and running it. Uh, tomorrow we'll go through and do what I need to do on the harrow. It shouldn't take very long, and I only want to spend about a half day on it tomorrow anyhow because I want to work on the garden some for Shelly to get that ready for her because she's going to be wanting that here pretty quick. And get the harrow done, and that's probably what that's probably the amount of TLC she's going to get for the season. I think we'll call it good after that. Oh, and I got a tire which one that one right yep that one we got to put that tire on or change that tire because the the inner it's ch it's chafing pretty hard right there and i don't think it's very far from seeing cord one of the downsides of a walking beam although this isn't technically a walking beam but one of the downsides of having wheels and tires in that arrangement so and unfortunately the way they made this thing there's not really a way to do any sort of alignment to make them not it just kind of is what it is it's tillage implement levels of uh what's the word i'm looking for accuracy tolerance some, you know what I'm saying. It's been a long day. Um, so anyhow, I'm going to get my mess cleaned up and go in and put up or put another Charles City video together because I still got, probably got about six or seven of those to get put up too. So it's going to be a long week. I got to be a busy week trying to get everything. Got to get the duels on the T, get the monitor put on the T. I got to order. I found a... I found a uh, GPS puck or a radar puck I want to get ordered for it um, so I got to get that I was gonna I guess I was gonna get that this week and forgot um, so I'll be running radar this year instead of the ground speed calculation which will be nice anyhow I'm rambling I'm just thinking out loud of all the stuff I still got to get done I didn't. I didn't think I was doing that bad when we left for Charles City, and then you le you leave for a week, and all the stuff that didn't get done, and now you're back, and everything's hitting all at once. It's like, I know I'm still not very behind, but I f now I feel like I'm behind because there were guys planting beans Wednesday, right? Yeah, because it started raining Thursday. Wednesday there were some guys planting beans down south of here. You'll never do that up here. The ground's too wet. We got. Uh -oh, we got three quarters of an inch of rain over the last two days so there's water standing everywhere but still it's it's the neighbor syndrome you see somebody running and then all of a sudden you're like damn gotta go but and there's a little bit of tree work i'd like to get done before we start running too but and then we got to spread fertilizer and start working ground and finish chits of plowing and it's just it's 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 it's, it's starting to weigh it's starting to weigh on me a little bit but anyhow I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna get off here and we'll catch you guys tomorrow okay we're back nice day outside it's quarter to ten it's almost like already almost like 70 degrees out although it's slightly worrying I don't like it to be that that warm that early in April. I don't. I, it, 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 it's only April. What is it today? The fourteenth. Yeah, fourteenth. And I know I, I, we had rain coming in the forecast all the next week, and now they took all that out. And now we got a bunch of dry. 
and I don't like that. I mean, yeah, it bodes well for getting a decent start on field work here in another week or so, but uh, I don't really want to be that dry that early. It's a little scary after what happened last year, but anyhow, we shouldn't have a whole lot to do today on this, anyhow. Get this done and go home and work on the garden project. But, uh, Change their place, a couple U bolts. I got spikes, U bolts, flange nuts, and section of chain. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I don't think that one's seventeen long anymore. That one lost a link somewhere along the line. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Cut on the line. bolt cutters might be faster. I'm going to go grab some bolt cutters and some new bolts for the tops. that didn't just snap off.
probably stand to be a little shorter, but those are the ones she called out for it, so those are the ones I ordered. But anyhow, I just got to do this a bunch of times, so you get the gist of it. You probably don't want to watch me do it the whole time. All right, I got nine chains done because I had enough 15 foot makes nine chains and leaves you two links left over, so that worked out pretty good. And I replaced 18 U-bolts and 10 spikes. And I basically burn up all the parts that I had bought. You can, this poor old hero is in such bad shape. You can sit here all day replacing parts if you wanted to, but I bet you'd have 1500 bucks in that thing by the time it was done. And I don't want to spend all that at one time. So, but now all we've got left to do today is that tire. Come on, come off high. There you go. Gotta get her folded up. And I don't remember if I use the forklift or if I can get in there with a jack. I honestly can't remember. Now let me get set up here. Alright. This tire could probably go a little longer, but. And by all rights, I could dismount it, flip it around and put it back on the rim the other way. So it scuffs the other side, but 112 bucks for a, and this one's only a, how many ply is this one? Trying to read it upside down. Eight ply. And the one I got to replace it is a 12, so you can run a higher pressure. Hopefully that will uh, reduce some of the scuffing a little bit. Um, and I think the one that I put on there to replace the one when I had that accident two, last spring, whenever it was where I hit the culvert with it, um, that one's a 12, and it's been holding up pretty good. But for 112 bucks, that's cheap insurance to not have to have something broke on the side of the road. I was a little disappointed though, because I bought a Carlisle. Because, you know, and Carlisle I think got bought out, and now their ag lines are, ag line tires are Carl Star, unfortunately. But, uh,. You know, he always bought Carlisle implement tires because they're made in the United States. Made in India. That really disappointed me when I saw it. And I'm going to have to get the bead breaker. I ever spent in my life. Twelve flies don't just push on nice and easy like eight flies do.
All right, tires are mounted up back on. Nice thing about 12 plies is you can run 60 pounds of pressure in them, which you really only need the pressure when it's folded up. When this thing's unfolded and in field or in work position, there's really not a whole lot of weight on them center tires, but you throw the weight of the wings on there and then you throw the weight of the tongue weight of the the basket behind it. Um when you're going down the road, that's when all the weight's on them and you really need them 12 flies. Um, so the tire that came off, I can keep that around as a spare for an off shit because it's, it's not showing cord yet. I just got a feeling that if I ran it through this season, it would be by the end. The joys of having to do a bunch of road travel to get to all the patches you farm. So anyhow, I got uh, bearing guards coming and lock plates coming. I almost bought um, Duralock, I think that's what they're called, Duralock washers. They're the spring loaded, they're made, they're made out of spring steel. They're supposed to keep constant pressure on the gang. But shoot didn't give me a thickness dimension to know if it would make up for the thickness of the uh, current lock caps on the end so i i shied away from them because at 30 bucks a piece i didn't want to buy 120 dollars worth of washers that i can't use so i just got lock plates um so that stuff should be here tuesday because it'll ship monday morning and i can finish this up tuesday tomorrow tomorrow after work I can get the 4150 finished up um, and then that'll be ready to go and then it'll just be an experiment to see whether or not we fixed our oil transfer problem and then if it did then we can go ahead and drain the hydraulic oil and put new hydraulic oil in it so that it's not contaminated. Now, luckily the only stuff it pulls is the stuff that only it pulls so i don't got to worry about cross contaminating with any other tractors so that's that's nice um and then the rest of the week we got rain tuesday wednesday and then we got dry all through the end of next week as of right now so if i can get this and that done between monday and tuesday and then the rest of the week if we can spend getting the tea and the planter ready my seed should be here this week. He's been trying to drop it off for the last two weeks, but um, when he initially tried to drop it off was the week I was out in Iowa, so that didn't work out. And then we had rain rain this last week, and then he's been busy delivering seed, so hopefully the first part of this coming week, seed will be here, was his plan. And then once that's here, we can get the drill calibrated, and then the planter will be ready, the drill will be ready. Everything will be ready. I just got to order my GPS pup for the planner, which I should do that this evening before I forget. So, but I'm going to go ahead and go in and put this video together real quick. And then I'm going to go spend the rest of the afternoon working on the garden. So get that ready. So with that being said, that's it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one.